Alvar here coming at you with commentary for a fast place part 3 completionist playthrough. Uh, you can see Decepticon flag to the to the distance at the top of that skyscraper, you need a sniper rifle for it. We're going to come back to this area later, so anything we miss now, uh, you're going to get then. Uh, hit the first satellite with flamethrower, get all the Pac-Man dots, gives you a chest at the top of this building. Each chest takes exactly 3 hits to open, but you have to clip a 4th hit onto it. As you can see there, I started to swing and jumped away, just to save a few seconds. See, if you smash through that door and then rush at an angle, it'll stop you right on top of the first log. Aim for center of mass on the jump uh, updraft. We'll get all three of the crates, pop the Decepticon flag, drop down, four crates. Then you want to go vehicle mode, ram smash this chest, and rush around to start the first fight. Now in this fight, we get exposed to a new enemy class, the Sergeant, which is that orange one in the lead. <clears throat> they're quite a bit more aggressive than the blue ones and uh, more capable like they'll chain combo attacks and they're a lot more fun to fight so my suggestion for opening this fight is go light light heavy light hit all three of them up into the air dash attack and uh, here I followed up light light heavy heavy which you can see the first dash attack misses everything so my advice for uh, following up the light light heavy light is to do a uh, ranged attack which lets gravity pull your character back down to the ground and sets you up for the next combo. Uh, light, light, heavy, heavy, uh, followed by the, the 360 sideswipe is a really good crown control option. Uh, and keep your eye on the radar at the bottom left. It, it lets you know when it's a good idea to use this attack. This attack here, heavy, heavy, light, <clears throat> lets you uh, smash on top of them and basically do a burnout on their flailing corpse which is really fun and the other nice thing is that when you finish that burnout it leaves you in vehicle mode at top speed so you can immediately go do an uppercut on another enemy so it can be very effective for uh, finishing one enemy and then progressing to another group or for moving from one and throwing another enemy off balance. Now this is Sideswipe Special uh, a good idea whenever you use it is to keep your eye on the radar because it does slightly move the enemies while you're hitting them so by watching the radar for the little red dots, you can see where you're pushing them and uh, make sure your explosion AOE is following up. Now I shouldn't have done the burnout there, I just did it for fun, and it ended up working out. But ideally I would have done the light, light, heavy, heavy, followed by 360. You can see here the uh, friendly AI gets a little derpy when you're doing that, but fortunately there aren't uh, a lot of encounters where you, you have that. And to the right of where I finished off there, you'll see the satellite popping back and forth. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to hit it with your rockets, but if you just keep firing, you will get it after one or two, as you saw there. You see here, I'm going to ram into this and then uppercut it. That will open up a non-timed chest, but chests like that, you need to ram, uppercut, and then hit it one more time. What is this stuff? Looks like Energon, smells like Energon. Now, you don't need, actually need to pick those up. I just did it for the narrative. It's a nice little uh, tidbit. And there's a Crimzeek over here, which is really annoying to get. Next, we're going to take this updraft all the way to the very top. There's two roads here. And we're going to ride this all the way to the end. This is really fun. I thought this was a really cool addition, just getting to drive around on this track. Basically, the planet's getting cyberformed. And uh, you've got a really neat kind of race course -y thing. At the end of that, you're going to immediately jump to the left, and you hit this secret area with a bunch of treasure chests in it. So smash the first one, grab the crates, smash these two in the crate. <clears throat> and then if you turn around again, you can see another satellite moving back and forth. Again, same thing, just keep firing rockets at it. It's a pain in the ass, but uh, you will hit it. <laughs> you can see where I started a little frustrated and I just move up and one shot it. There we go. And that sets up a timed cache. I'm going to go get the last crate before I get that. Head over. And Mario butt stomp for the win. Pop back up. And now we're going to head to the first side mission, side mission 1-1. One, one, which is a, it's a blast. So my advice for starting this off uh, is to do light, light, heavy, light. And if you time it right, you'll hit all of the enemies with the, uh, the chain reaction. Here I only hit one, unfortunately. But if you do get them all and follow it up with the special, you can kill them all in about less than 10 seconds, which is really cool. You can see I almost wiped most of them out. Uh, 
Uh, and again, if you if you are above the enemies as I was there, it's a good idea to, to fire a rocket or just, just do a very quick volley of whatever ranged weapon you have equipped, just so you can drop down and, and actually hit things with your dash attacks. Yeah, which I <laughs> keep failing to do, I know, but... Uh, I really like sideswipes rockets. Like at first I didn't because they fire so much more slowly, but they're they're kind of fire and forget in that uh, you don't even have to be looking at what you want to hit. So here I just switch the flamethrower, smash the first barrier just for the money. Fry this seeker, switch back to rocket launcher, smash the second barrier for the money. And these guys have just terrible aim, atrocious. Uh, if I, I was watching to see if they would get a shot near me so I could uh, dodge it for focus bonus, but they, they, never, they really do. <laughs> you can see I totally whiffed an uppercut there. Uh, and everything's trying to hit me, so I decided to use my ultimate. And here I'm looking exclusively at my radar, and you can see as the dots disappear, I try to aim back at the other enemies. At this point, I'm concerned about that Seeker uh, hitting me with uh, by being a cherry-picking douchebag, so I want to finish this guy ASAP and take that Seeker out. Because there's nothing worse than getting just one, getting a, a random hit from a Seeker and losing an S or an SS rank. So that's all the enemies. Quickly drive to the end of the road. So my time there wasn't particularly good. You can usually get that um, in under a minute 30. Still an S rank though. This seems like a really good side mission for getting rare items. Uh, I, I've seen them pretty common out of that one. Once you're done that, we're going to head back over. Again, jump all the way back up to the top. Dash over and uppercut that to open it. And we can finally move on. I'm going to roll into this laser. Nice. Skills. Now, this group has uh, two douchebags with shields, which are a real pain because they interrupt your combos until you take the shields off. So I like to open that fight with a special just to deal with them immediately. Now, I started this fight with uh, light, light, heavy, heavy, and a 360 and a dash just because I was concerned that the guy behind me would be rushing me at this point, which he isn't. He's only now starting to come at me. So I should have opened that with a heavy, heavy, light, burn out on his corpse, and then did what I did there and rush over and just pwn this guy. But that worked out pretty well. I think we still get either a S or a A, yeah. Next, we're going to jump down here and do the smash cache. You can see the next log there. This is where the level deviates. So if you go right here, uh, is one way to get to the end and if you go left there's another way if you end up going right and you go back through the left passage like via the back entrance you don't get the same encounters but that being said they're not scored encounters whereas this one is also there's a secret tunnel uh, from the first room where we had the fight with the the sergeant there and I'll show you that going back through it the other way because there's some crates in it eventually so this is a hard fight to get a good score on. You can do it very quickly to get an A, uh, as I did here. And I think if you really want to uh, max that one out, you have to probably just farm focus dodges. Like, just keep the fight going until you've dodged a bunch of fire. Because you can't really get headshots with uh, side sword weapons. That there that I just went to is side mission 1-2. Uh, it's basically a bunch of satellites you can hit that get progressively higher. It is doable with the flamethrower, but it's really difficult. So I just, I just bypassed it for now. We'll get it later. This is another scored fight. Opens up with three ground troops and finishes with three very annoying seekers. Um, to get a good score on this one, again, I think you probably want to farm focus uh, dodges for the bonus points. Or you could try doing it extremely fast, which will probably get you an A. Um, but I think focus dodges would be the more reliable route just because the seekers uh, do have good aim this time. And they, uh, they're pretty aggressive. As you can see there, like they're immediately, they're already honing in on me. Constantly. <clears throat> so I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, that guy hit me in the back and interrupt my combo. So that was kind of the end of my good score for this, for this particular fight. Again, getting strafed. You could probably tell I was a little nervous doing some dodges that I don't need to be doing. Um, I think if I had been a bit more aggressive, this might have gone better. I'm not sure I've ever S ranked this yet, though. I haven't. I haven't really tried to farm any uh, high rank, any any score fights yet. God, they're really annoying. Just, <laughs> just die there. Yeah, we got a B here. So 
So as soon as that's done, uh, the one rooftop in this arena, there's a smash cash secret <laughs> that opens a satellite, that opens three more smash caches, that opens a treasure chest. So we'll get these smash caches with a butt stomp. <clears throat> I really like the transformer noise, but you hear it a lot in that little short period of time, so it's a little annoying. So I'm gonna ram into this uppercut it. You can see here that's gonna open it right away because it's not a time chest. Next, we're gonna proceed to the other rooftop where we've got the, uh, that's the final log, the third log. And out here we've got our second flag for this arena, for, for this stage. Pop that, we'll head up over this. This wind tunnel leads to the uh, the end of the level, but I'm going to show you the uh, the other path that you can get here. So right now we're we're going backwards along the other route from where we fought the first battle. Smash these. That fight music is for a fight that's triggered behind me, which we're going to pass through again in a moment. There's one chest in this area. This area here, this um, this road with the ramps above it. If you come through this right about where I am now. It'll trigger a bunch of seekers to land on random rooftops and fire at you. Uh, their, their aim's okay, but it's not a scored encounter, so there's no point in killing them unless you want experience. We'll smash that chest, turn around, we've got another satellite. This one, you can see it, it it's fast, but it slows down momentarily in the middle, so aim for the center where it's uh, slowing down and you'll hit it. Puts a shielded chest at the far end here. We'll dash through, hammer that. And off in the distance there, you can see the final reachable flag for the stage at this point. Again, there there are collectibles here that you can see, but not... Yeah, the rocket launcher, there we go. There are collectibles in this level that you can see, but you can't hit yet, just because Sideswipe's weapons don't have the range or are too slow. So there's several um, Decepticon spy ops that you can potentially take out if you have the patience in the ammo. But it's a real pain, because the only thing you can reach them with is the rocket launcher. And uh, there's the uh, the flag on the skyscraper that you need to snipe right before. So we're just going to wait and get those later. This fight here is uh, annoying because it, it highlights uh, one minor complaint that I have about the game, which I'll point out when it happens. And also because it's not scored. So you can see here, anytime a fight's not scored, I, I you can see I make mistakes. I, don't, I get lazy. <laughs> so you can see they're kind of wrecking me. And uh, that's what those shield douchebags do. If you... If you attack anything near them and you just happen to clip it, it interrupts your combo completely. And they're basically impervious, so... Yeah, that's what happened there, is if you leave a kind of... a defined area for the fight to take place in certain fights, it resets all of the enemies. Not It doesn't reset their health, just their positions, so they, they dash back out. So it can be a little jarring. Uh, it's not really a big deal, but uh, I feel like they probably could have fixed that. There's a spy ops that you could have found. Also, at the end of that wind tunnel that I just drove to, there's a, a satellite dashing back and forth very quickly. It is hittable with Sideswipe's rockets, but what it does is it opens up a cache that you can't get because it's in the middle of that wind tunnel that you can't progress through. Again, this isn't a scored fight, just doing it for fun. <laughs> and again, making mistakes because I know it's not scored. I don't know why these claw fights are kind of... They're nice, they're quick, they're simple. And they're... Uh, that, that dodge is actually just a little bit challenging, so it's kind of fun at the same time. This one's almost done. Just gonna flamethrower it to death. And it's down. So in this next part, we're gonna introduce to a new mechanic, which is when you're in vehicle mode, when you pass through these flashing circles, it puts you into supersonic mode where you can smash through the barriers. And you can see they go gray if you're in uh, in robot mode, so you can't. they don't actually give you a speed boost. And that's going to come into play into the final boss battle, not in this episode, but the next one. So now we're we're back in the starting area. Uh, go to the other side of the map, and you can see we're in a secret tunnel with a few caches or uh, crates in it. I'm going to smash all those because I can. Nothing else down here. Then we're going to head back up, and we're back at the uh, the gauntlet of lasers. I'm going to flamethrower them to death just for the cash. This is quick, easy cash while we're driving. And we're going to head back to the wind tunnel that leads us to the tower. After dripping this jump. And this starts a neat little encounter. You can see a spy ops up there. Not going to bother getting it. I'm pretty sure that 
that isn't a scored encounter. I'll double check, but uh, I believe that you, you can kill all those and I don't think anything happens. Same with these guys. This is definitely not a scored encounter, so I'm just going to skip these, ram my way through. And uh, these claws, I believe, are connected to... You see, I get this chest and five Seekers spawn. You you physically don't have enough ammo to get that fight done unless you get very lucky with what they drop. So I'm just going to skip them and run straight to the boss fight. Can you hear it, Optimus? It's calling out to those Insecticons, somehow directing them. Or I tried to dash him to take him out immediately, didn't work. Uh, I really like this uh, this little race encounter. When he's in the dump truck, he'll throw energon cubes at you to try to, to throw you off. And as soon as you uppercut him out of it, he'll be invulnerable for a second. But you can immediately load a combo and dash into him. You saw he pooped out a, a common weapon there. So this is an interesting fight because every time you smash him out of uh, tank mode, he will drop an item uh, every single time. So this is a really good place to farm if you were looking for rare items. I, personally, I don't really care about the items. I don't intend to upgrade anything until I'm, I've beaten the game or until it becomes evident that I have to upgrade things. Um, like you'll see here, he'll drop another item. I've never seen him not drop an item and I've also seen him have a very high frequency of dropping rare items in this fight. Without even trying, like, he, he, I've seen him drop multiples. So if you were to knock him out of tank mode, wait for him to go back into tank mode, you could potentially get quite a few items here. But if you just want to get the fight over with, just keep smashing him to death as I am. <laughs> and he, he doesn't really do anything when he's in robot mode, except for try to get back into tank mode. And when he's in tank mode, he'll, he will fire at you. Uh, and it does hurt. I think it takes off about just under a third of your health. And what's important to note here is that any damage you take in this fight will carry over to the next fight. So if you start the next fight with a sliver of, or sorry, if you finish this fight with a sliver of health, that's where you're going to have to start the next much harder fight. So you can see I'm trying really hard to not take any damage here while you're racing him around the claws at you. Up, up here, there's a destructible wall he blasts through when you hurt him enough. If you don't, if he hasn't taken enough damage yet, he'll just keep doing loops. And this takes you to the final arena that we're going to cover in the next episode. Once again, thanks for watching AV Archivist. I hope you found the commentary insightful, entertaining, and informative. If you prefer to see it without commentary, you can click the link in the top left. And if you want to see the fun, very quick playthrough of the episode, you can click on the video here. And as always, every time you like, share, or subscribe to AV Archivist, you time travel by exactly how long it takes you to like, share, or subscribe. Have a great day.